Do you wake up feeling anxious for seemingly no reason? Do you wake up some mornings with your head spinning full of negative thoughts about yourself, about how unloved and unworthy you are? Do you look at yourself in the mirror and start judging yourself with all of your self-perceived imperfections? Just me, huh? Okay, well, if you've never experienced that, then you probably don't need to watch this video. I'm Jenica Hill. Welcome to my channel, which is all about embracing and celebrating your full magical self. Because you, my friend, are magical. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much. Today we are talking about Morning anxiety. Why? Well, because I have experienced crippling morning anxiety for years and years and years, and only recently have I started to find some tactics that really work for me to ease that morning anxiety. I'm filming this in my bedroom because this is the room and this is the bed where I wake up with morning anxiety. I felt like it would be fitting, but it is going to be kind of loud because there's construction going on outside and these windows are really old so you can hear everything that's going on outside through the windows. So, you know, bear with me. I don't look like this when I wake up in the morning, just so you know, but I'm filming a video and I like to put makeup on when I'm filming a video because it makes me feel more confident. What is morning anxiety like? Well, for me, morning anxiety consists of waking up already feeling kind of down. My head is spinning with thoughts like, I'm so unworthy, I'm so unloved, I'm not good enough. I am so far behind in my life. What am I even doing with my life? I haven't reached my goals. I'm never going to reach my goals. I don't even like myself. Then I get up out of bed and I go to my full-length mirror that greets me before I even go to the bathroom and then I just start judging myself. So I'm looking at my face like, oh my god, I thought that I would stop getting zits by the time I was 30. Why do I still have a zit? Ew, I hate my nose. Look at my huge pores. It's like mean girls up in my head, you know? And I'm not even going to tell you the crappy things that I say to myself about my body because it can be very triggering for people who've experienced eating disorders or body dysmorphia or disordered eating and I don't even want to go there. Let me just say that I'm meaner to myself than the girls in charge are in sorority hazing lifetime movies. So you can only imagine. All bodies are beautiful but the reason you probably know the crappy things that I say about my body, we live in a society where the beauty industry makes a lot of money from telling us all that we aren't enough and that we aren't pretty enough, skinny enough, all these things. They want us to buy their really expensive products, so they tell us that all the time, and it's going on in our heads all the time, and I am not immune to this. So after I look at myself in the mirror and hate myself thoroughly, I've already put myself down in my mind so much before even uttering a single word for the day. And then I start thinking about my morning tasks, and I start thinking, Wow, I can't even take care of myself. The simplest tasks seem so hard. Why is making food for myself so much harder for me than it is for other people? I can't write an article for work. I have nothing to say. Nobody cares about what I have to say. I can't film the audition I have today because nobody likes me and I won't even book the job anyway. I'm not pretty enough and I'm not, I'm too old and- Oh, the thoughts just keep going and going and going. A note on negative feelings. Negative feelings in themselves are not bad. I personally feel like shunning negative feelings just to try to be positive but in a fake way is actually unhelpful because it makes me feel negative for denying my feelings, if that makes sense. But there's a difference between feeling negative because something negative is going on and just being unwilling to let go of the idea that you're not good enough. Because the truth is, you are good enough. You are perfectly and magically made the way that you are and all of those thoughts that are going through your head that are negative are lies. Now, don't get me wrong, I still experience morning anxiety on occasion 
it's normal, it's part of life. But I have basically gathered a bunch of different tactics from a bunch of different sources and I've created morning routines that really work for me. So I thought I would share five different tactics to ease morning anxiety with you, the viewers who I love so very much and am so very grateful for. Like I said, these tactics come from various different sources and I will try to cite my sources as I go along and give you links to them in the description of the video so that, you know, I'm not hoarding information and I give it to you so you can go straight to the source, you don't have to take my word for it. I also feel the need to add a lot of the YouTubers I really admire are like 21 years old and that's awesome! Good for them, I'm so impressed with everything that they're doing. However, being 30, yes, I'm 30 and I'm loving it, baby. I've realized that the older you get, the less fucks you give. So sometimes just getting older will ease some of that anxiety that you wake up with. However, I was still experiencing crippling morning anxiety in my late 20s. Probably had something to do with the fact that I wasn't out as bisexual yet and I was still hiding part of myself. I realized that if you let morning anxiety go on for too long, you will just always have it. Even, it doesn't matter how old you get. It's probably best to just start finding morning routines now that work for you if you are experiencing this on the daily like I was. Okay, moving on. Tactic number one, reframe your negative thoughts. I like to think of this very visually and imagine myself thinking negative thoughts and I literally stop them in my mind, I grab them and throw them out, or it's like a big dump truck of bad thoughts and I stop the truck as it's going through my mind and I go and reverse it out of my brain. Abraham Hicks talks about this a lot, so do the acting mindset mentors Bonnie Gillespie and Wendy Braun, but essentially what you do to reframe negative thoughts is to try some affirmations. If you don't like the word affirmation, too bad it's what we're using. But you don't have to think of it like that. Think of it as just basically rewriting your negative thought into a positive one. So you can do this in a myriad of ways. Say them out loud. I personally don't really like saying affirmations out loud. It's just not really my thing. But when I was in the deepest depths of feeling really bad about myself every morning, I did actually have to look at myself in the mirror and reframe my negative thoughts. So if my negative thought was something like, I'm unworthy, I would look at myself in the mirror and say, I am worthy. Simple. If my negative thought was, what am I even doing with my life? My reframing affirmation might be, I am on the exact right path and the universe is conspiring for me. If you are someone who really doesn't like woo-woo stuff and you're like, this is just a bunch of woo-woo baloney. I used to be you, okay? But I just started to realize that it's more fun living life feeling like the universe is conspiring for me. It makes me feel better, it makes every day more enjoyable, so why the heck not? You know, give in, why not? Feels good. You can also choose to write down your positive affirmations, so you can write down all of your negative affirmations and then change them into positive ones next to it. Cross out your negative affirmations, even burn them, that feels really good sometimes. Basically the idea is the more you retrain your negative thoughts to be more positive thoughts and you give yourself positive affirmations, it becomes a habit and then those positive thoughts are running through your head much more than the negative ones. What's crazy is you can actually control your thoughts. Who knew? A lot of people, but maybe you didn't so I'm telling you now. Tactic number two, clear your mind. Sometimes when you're feeling super negative and down and you wake up just really hating yourself, you might not be able to get rid of your negative thoughts right away and you might just feel really annoyed by the idea of changing them into positive thoughts. I've totally been there. So the only way sometimes to get rid of these thoughts running through your head is to actually just clear your mind completely. There are a few ways you can do this. One is meditation. My fellow YouTuber Trans Spirit Indigo has a video up right now, which I'll link to, about different meditation practices you can have that have nothing to do with sitting there in silence and meditating. You can play music, you can do a sport, but in terms of clearing your mind, I do find that sometimes sitting in silence can really help. So maybe I'll look on YouTube for a self-guided meditation, maybe I'll use an app that has self-guided meditations, or sometimes I just set a timer on my phone for 5 to 15 minutes and I sit there 
and I just focus on my breath. If thoughts are coming through, I let them pass, that's fine. But eventually, if I really focus on my breath, or even the sounds of construction across the street, then I will end up clearing my mind and my thoughts kind of stop in their tracks. Another thing you can do to clear your mind is actually just do a brain dump. So if you know about The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron, love it, we'll link to it, then you know about morning pages. And this is basically just three pages of stream of consciousness writing right in the morning, right when you wake up. And you can do a mind dump in these pages by just writing out everything that you're feeling and thinking and getting it out on the page and then leaving it on the page. Usually when I do this, it really helps me just get rid of all of those negative feelings so I can just simply move on with the day. Or sometimes I find when I'm writing these pages, I actually start to come up with solutions to problems that I'm facing or I start to feel better about it just because I'm realizing how silly a lot of my thoughts are. If you don't like journaling, no problem. You can also just speak out all of the things that you're worrying about and all of your negative thoughts. However it works for you, just try to get all of those negative thoughts out of your head because it is not fair that they are in there and they're not paying any rent. Tactic number three, focus on gratitude. It's actually scientifically proven that gratitude and fear cannot exist at the same time. It's science, look it up. Abraham Hicks refers to this as writing out your positive aspects, but you could also see it as a gratitude journal, which a lot of people like to call it. But uh, one tactic that I use to focus on gratitude is journal about all the great things that are going on in my life. So trying really, really hard to focus on the positive instead of all of the things that are worrying me or all the things I don't have. I remember one morning I was feeling particularly terrible. I woke up and I felt like I needed to cry and I didn't even know why and I was just so fed up with feeling this way, making myself feel bad that I was feeling bad. It was just a mess and I listened to one of Abraham Hicks YouTube videos and I started to write out my positive aspects and I started writing things like, I have a shower and hot water and I can take a hot shower today. It completely turned my day around. I'm not even kidding. So again, if you don't like journaling, you can speak your gratitude out loud and record it and just talk about all the things you're grateful for and then play it back for yourself throughout the day. The reason I'm telling you this is because if you haven't tried it, it really, really works. And maybe you've heard it a million times, but there's a reason. So again, if you haven't tried it, here's Jenica telling you, please try this. It actually works. Tactic number four, get moving. Okay, don't get mad at me about this one, but exercise can really, really help to turn your mood around in the morning. You might be thinking, duh. But if you hate the word exercise or you're not somebody who likes to do a HIIT workout, take a yoga class, you know, do a spin class, go running, just think of it as moving your body because changing your physical state immediately changes your mental state. It gets your blood flowing, gets those endorphins in your body, and you can't help but feel, di feel differently than you did before. You can just move in a way that works for your body and that you actually enjoy. Like, you know I'm a big fan of this, have a dance party. Go around and just dance in your house, put on a song that makes you happy, or a song that makes you sad and just feel it in your body and let your body move according to that song. You can put the song in different parts of your body and just let yourself go. Don't even think about how you look because probably no one's going to see it. And if you have a family and they're going to see it, then get them in on it too because you can have a family dance party and I'm just a big fan of a dance party. Tactic number five, find joy. This basically just means finding joy in any little thing. Have a list ready of activities or just things about life that make you feel joyful and try one of them. It can be so simple like coffee makes you feel joyful. Maybe watching the sunrise makes you feel joyful. So get up early and watch the sunrise the next day. Maybe watch the sunset that night. If a song makes you joyful, put on that song. If it makes you feel joyful to wear Colorful socks. Put on your colorful socks. Why not? And if you keep letting yourself find the joy, the joy will start finding you. For me, joy every single morning is cuddling with my husband and then going downstairs, putting on one of our favorite songs, and having a little dance party with him while we brush our teeth, being our silly, ridiculous selves. 
that is my favorite way to start the day. And it brings me joy, and honestly, it's really hard to have a bad day after that. It's still possible, of course, but I don't start the day feeling that way, and then throughout the whole day, I just remember the joy that I had in the morning, and I remember that I can have that joy again the next day. Well, there you have it, five different tactics you can try if you have morning anxiety. I hope this video was at least a little bit helpful, and if you do have morning anxiety and you have tactics that I didn't even mention, please comment below. I'd love to talk about it and I'd love to learn from you. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, tell all your friends, and hit the little bell icon if you'd like to get notifications every time I post a new video, which is every Wednesday. Hump day, little hump day treat, new video. And hey, of course, please, 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 pretty please, go out and be your full magical self today. The world needs you, just as you are.